Hi there, Darren here from 365 Assist. I was asked recently if I could produce a Power Automate flow that would list all the SharePoint sites that I have access to. So I thought I'd create a video of how I did this. Um, this doesn't work for all sites in the SharePoint list. Um, I'll explain why in the video. Uh, so I hope this helps you if you need to do that. So just to show you for illustration purposes, I just happen to be a SharePoint admin. You don't have to be a SharePoint admin to do what this is showing, but I just wanted to show you <clears throat> that you can't get all the list of SharePoint sites if you haven't got permission. If you want to do that, as I said, you need to be a SharePoint admin, and this is my list in my admin center, and there's an export button here that'll export all the site names to a CSV. So if you want everything, A, you need to be a SharePoint administrator, and then you come in here and just export all the sites. It's as easy as that. But if you're not an admin, which most people are not, then this is what this video will show you. Even as a SharePoint admin, I don't have access to all these sites, right? So I have, in this particular instance, I do have access to the all company. If I click on that URL, then that comes up quite nicely, which is good. Uh, but if I go to something like communications, I know I don't have access as a user to that. So if I click that, I don't have access to that. I don't have permission to that site. So this, in this case, in what I'm showing you, I will not get... Uh, the list for communications, I should in my list get all company because I've got access to all company, <clears throat> but I don't have access to communications. In my example, I'm going to send the output of the SharePoint list to an Excel table. You don't have to do that. You can send it where you want. Um, I'm not going to show you how to create this table. That's other people have done other videos of how to create Excel tables. So in this case, I've just pre-created um, created an Excel sheet and in that I've created a table just that's going to hold all the site names. So uh, you want to do that first before you start building up the uh, the, the, the flow. Um, and I just save this in OneDrive. You could keep it in SharePoint if you wanted, but for, for my purpose, it's just in OneDrive. So let's start by creating the flow. Uh, an instant flow is probably the best that I want to do. Just give it a name, count files in SharePoint site and it's just a manual trigger. So the first action is the HTTP request you want from send uh, to SharePoint. So there's, a, there's an action called send HTTP request to SharePoint. I think it's something like that. There it is there. That's the one you want to start with. Now in the site address, what you want is the top level of your SharePoint site. So the landing, if you like. So over here, I'm just going right to my top level. It's this one here. This is the first bit. If you've got some stuff under uh, past that, just, just copy this first section and we don't need all the other stuff that goes with it. And then we'll make this a custom value and put that in there. Then of course, this is a get method. And in the URI, we need something specific. So I just found this somewhere. This is the URI, URI you want. Um, if I remember, I'll put this in the description. Don't ask me to tell you exactly what it is. I know it's a search query, obviously. Uh, so this is the URI that will get all the sites that you are available to you uh, that you have access to. So use that, um, just type that in as I've got it here, or if I put in the description, you can copy it from there. Uh, that's what you want at this stage. Now, typically what we do next is we do, well, we do a parse JSON and typically what we would do in a, to create the parse JSON is run, run this flow and get a sample out of this flow to run into the parse JSON. And unfortunately, that's not going to work because of the way this output comes. It doesn't come directly as an array. So we sort of have to build the array as we parse the JSON. It comes out as an object. So uh, we're going to have to manually do it, and I'll have to give you a specific, well, what I used anyway. You might find something different, but I'll give you the exact code I used to do the parse JSON and the other bits. So at this stage, we'll add the parse JSON in. Uh, parse JSON, it's easy there. 
and we'll stick that in now as i said we we would normally if we go to content and we hit the samples here we would typically get the body but that's not going to help us because that doesn't create us the array we want so i have to sort of build that so we'll put in here um, an expression and this is the exact expression i put in myself uh, ChatGPT helped me build this a little bit. Um, so this is what I used. Again, I'll put the, try and put the code in the description or a file in the description to, so you can just copy and paste what I've got uh, to do this. So we'll just add that in. And then same with the schema, we're not taking, because of that, we're not taking the schema uh, directly from the sample that we use. So I'll play, paste that in as well. And this is the schema here that I've used. Again, I'll put that in the description so you can just, it's a short sort of schema in itself, um, but it helps do that. So if we test that, save and test, that should work hopefully quite nicely. There you go, ran fine. If I show the raw outputs of the JSON that it's created, they're all very nice. There's keys and values most of which um, you don't need all of, but it's quite clean in, in the way it's got it. So now let's go back to the edit of it. Uh, and the next thing we need to do is put a select statement in here for the JSON. So let's go into select. Oh, if I spell it right, that helps. Uh, this select here, data operations. And we're gonna take the from, what we need to take the from is the body results, not the body, but the body results. And then we're going to have two keys, uh, for two in the map, sorry. The first one is key. And what I'm going to do is grab one. You don't want to just take it from, again, because it's in the JSON. You don't want to take it from here because it doesn't quite work. You need to put your own expression in here. So I just paste it from somewhere else, get rid of these little things. That's the one you want to put in there, item brackets key, like that. And add that in. And the next one you want to put in is a value, which is a similar sort of thing. Again, there's nothing in here in which to take the value from. Uh, so I'm just going to copy it from somewhere I did it before. Put it in the expression. Stick it in there. Just get rid of those little brackets. So that's what you want to put in the value there item. This time it has a little question mark in there. I don't know why. One does, one doesn't. Uh, and then we'll give that a test. Fantastic, we've got 10 in the select. If I show the raw outputs for each one, so this will be the first one you can see. So that'll be the first record. Again, this time it's coming quite nicely. Now we're say, starting to see this is just one of the 10 records of all the different uh, columns that are in there, which are really good. So we're starting to see the manipulation of the data. Again, it's it, in my case, it's one of 10 records. I'm sure you'll have a, a different number depending on how many sites you have, but each one for each site. Now we don't want all that, all those fields I showed you before. We only want the site name um, in there. So if I go to edit again, what I'm gonna do is filter this array. So if I do a filter array, take that and I wanna filter. So again, I'm filtering the select statement, the output from the select statement. And then my filter, uh, I wanna put in uh, an expression I want to put in the key. I'm filtering on the key. So like we had before in the select statement, add that. And is equal to is equal to site name. That's what we want to filter on. Uh, so the item is of, is of that. So now we just need to do a uh, apply to each for that filter. So we need to run, the, so that array, that filtered array. So we're going to do a last um, apply to each for that. I spell it wrong, come on. Yep. And then on the filter array, the output of that. And in that, in that apply to each, we're gonna add a row to the Excel, which is the last thing we wanna do. Add a new row into a table in Excel. Add that to the OneDrive for business. Again, OneDrive, the file is the SharePoint list file I've got. There's one table in there. And then the parameters, it's a site name parameter. And in the site name, again, we're doing expression. We're gonna put in that value from, this time it's gonna pick it up from the filter array, add that. 
And let's give it one final test, which hopefully will give us the output we're looking for, the 10 rows in my case that we're looking for. And we can see it successfully worked fantastic. If I go to my SharePoint list in Excel, there we go. There are the rows that I've got um, that I've got there for them. So there are all the sites I've got access to that in my list of site addresses, which is great. So I hope this video has helped you uh, in getting a list of SharePoint sites you have access to. You're probably also asking, well, can I do this on behalf of my colleague and see what they have, what SharePoint sites they have? Unfortunately, with security doesn't and permissions don't let you run a flow on behalf of somebody else. So you're going to have to share this flow with them and they will have to run it. And then obviously with there as them being the user, the list of SharePoint sites that they have will come up in the list. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe.